So today we're going to talk about electric potential. And just like what we did with electric field lines, we're going to relate it to mechanics and potential energy. And to be more specific, gravitational potential energy. What we realized from our electric field video is that the electric field is equal to force per test point charge. Or E is equal to F per Q, F over Q. And when we related it back to gravitational fields, we drew the Earth and we drew gravitational field lines, which looked similar to this. Now, our charged particle, which right now would be the Earth, has all the field lines directed towards the center of the Earth. And that's what all of these arrows are showing. Now suppose I put an object, a small object, on the surface of the Earth. And I wanted to increase the amount of potential energy that it has. What would I have to do? Well, I would have to increase its elevation. I would have to take it from the surface and move it to a higher location. And I have now increased the amount of potential energy by moving in the opposite direction of my electric field. If I, in, of my, I moved it in the opposite direction of my gravitational field. These two directions are very, very key. If I want to increase the amount of potential, I have to move in the opposite direction. I cannot move horizontally. I cannot move down. I have to move in the opposite direction of the electric field lines. Now, we want to calculate what the, what the values are. How much potential energy do I have? And we know, going back to mechanics, if I want to find out gravitational potential energy, I had to take the force of the object, or the weight of the object, and I had to multiply it by how far I moved it in the upwards direction. So my gravitational potential energy was equal to force times distance. So now let's relate it back into electric fields. Where we have electric fields are equal to force per charge, and I multiplied my force by x, I should get the value of potential energy. So potential energy over my charge is how we figure out the electric potential. And when I change this potential energy, that is the equivalent of the voltage, my change in voltage, delta V. Now our formula sheet that we'll, have, that we'll see will be written slightly different. It's going to put potential by itself the electric potential by itself, so it'll be changed around written like this. Where we now have the change in our potential electric potential energy is equal to my change in voltage multiplied by my test point charge. Now one thing that we need to realize is we need to realize that this formula can be expanded out and that the change in my potential energy is equal to voltage at point B minus voltage at point A multiplied by my Q. Now when we're doing single point charges, we're going to assume that voltage A is going to be zero. It's going to be infinitely far away that we don't have to worry about it. And so anything minus zero will just be voltage B. So we can condense this formula if we're using a single point charge to be potential energy is equal to voltage times my charge. Now I've got a situation here where I have a large negative charge 
and a small positive charge some distance away. And what I want to say is if my positive charge, if I were to move it along a path where every point is the same distance away from my negative charge, what is the change in my energy? What is the change in my electric potential at this spot? Now what I'm going to say is I'm going to say that the change in my potential is going to be zero. But Mr. G, didn't you say that force times distance is going to get me a change in my potential. Fx is equal to u. Correct. Force times distance is equal to potential energy. However, the direction of my movement, just like I said earlier, has got to be parallel with my field lines. And right now, if I look at the distance away on my field lines, they're all the exact same distance from the center. So my change in my position away from my negative charge is zero. So if I have the force that's being exerted multiplied by zero, my change in my potential will also be zero. Now what we're going to do is we're going to continue this path. If it were to continue in a circular path around this negative charge, what should it look like? Now hopefully this looks pretty similar to a circle. And what this entire line shows is it shows regions of equal potential. Whatever the potential energy is here is the same as what it is here, is the same as what it is all the way around. So what we call these lines that go perpendicular with my field lines, these are equal potential lines. So here I have two regions of equal potential lines, one on the inside and one on the outside. And what we want to look at is we want to, we want to look at how a particle moves from one region of equal potential to a lower region of equal potential or to a different location. And right now, if we were to have this particle, this test point charge, slightly positive, being released from a far point away from our large negative charge, it's going to be attracted towards the negative charge. It's going to be pulled towards it. But how is it going to do it? Is it going to move at a constant velocity, or is it going to move at an accelerating velocity? Well, if we think that there is a force between these two, then we know force is equal to mass times acceleration. So as a particle travels from one area, one region of equal potential to another, as it does so, it's going to accelerate. The entire time it's going to accelerate as it goes to the region of equal potential, as long as the force is constant. So now what we're going to do is we're going to try and relate electric potential and electric fields directly. The way that we're going to go about doing this is we are now going to be in a uniform electric field. Before we had them all radiating out from a single source, but now all of our lines are parallel. Now in my uniform electric field, we're going to have a small positive charge at point A. And the direction of all of my fields point to the right direction. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my positive charge and I'm going to move it over to point B, over to the left. Now, that distance that it travels, we're just going to call it value of r. And what we learned is the change in our potential, the change in our potential energy, or u, ue, 
is the same as force times distance. How much force did I have to apply to push this charge to location B? So it'll be force times R. And now we're going to kind of combine two formulas together, putting into our potential equation. But before we go that we before we go there, we need to talk about our electric fields. And our electric fields, in our formula that we had for electric fields, we had electric field is equal to the force over the charge. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to get force all by itself. And we're going to substitute that right back into a force part of this equation. So I can say that my potential energy, the, po the change in my potential, is going to be the same as once I multiply by Q on both sides, I should have EQ, the electric potential multiplied by my charge. I'm going to multiply that by the distance that I traveled. So these two formulas are now equivalent. Now we're going to relate it back into our change in voltage, or our voltage formula that we had before. I'm going to erase this line. And we had the change in voltage is equal to the change in our potential over our charge Q. So the change in my voltage was change in potential over Q. Well, I have change in potential here, and I have a Q, so what we're going to do is we're going to rearrange to get my Q over to the other side to get change in potential over charge, or the equivalent of change in voltage. So if I rearrange and I get U over Q is equal to just my electric field multiplied by the distance that I traveled. Or, this ends up becoming change in voltage is equal to the value of my electric field lines multiplied by the distance that I've traveled. So this is where we're left off. But on the physics 2 formula sheet, they have it rearranged only in terms of electric field. So the way that we're going to rearrange is just to get E by itself, we'll just have a change in voltage over the distance that we traveled. So I'll write that off to our side. We'll have E is equal to change in voltage over my change in distance, my change in R. And that's the exact same formula that we're going to see on the AP exam. What this also tells us is it gives us new units for how we can express an electric field. And that electric field is just going to be volts per meter. We measure our distance in meters, so it'll be the chain, the, my electric field is going to be volts over meter, V over M for units.